Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Hi, this is Ben. You're listening to the Otaku Generation Podcast, where you're very confused. What's Reesh? What's Bank? Well, you know who to thank. It's Ellen and the boys. So let's all make some noise. The acting never gets old. It rocks me to my duck hole. They bring all the otaku to the yard. Otaku generation, they rock hard. Otaku generation show. Otaku generation show. Otaku generation show. Otaku generation show. Hey everyone, welcome to show 885. I am Alan. And I am Paul. And I think in um, three more shows, we will technically be 17 years old. Damn. What's Freesh? What's Bang? What's Squeak with the OG crew? Many interesting things worth sharing. I basically bought a new house um, that they're still building. So I am going through the rigorous process too slowly of figuring out what I got to trash so that I can kind of get to that point where I can just move in a much easier fashion. And again, I always talk about, I always stare over to, to, to my right, looking at a bunch of crap that I'm going to trash down here. You know, I see boxes in the corner over there. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff. That's it. That's sort of where my life has been at. Literally clean house. Uh, it will likely be as that boring <laughs> for a while. <laughs> I guess the only thing of interesting note, and I don't know if it came from a conversation we had last week or not. I watched the first Indiana Jones movie. Still a very good movie, you know, given how old it is. Um, sure. Still holds up. Uh, still interesting, still good filmmaking. If you liked Indiana Jones, you know there are certain beats of the movie that you look forward to. So that was definitely still true. Um, so that's it. That was that was kind of all that I, I really effectively did. What about you, Paul? I haven't watched the new episode of Strange New Worlds yet. Okay. So. Uh, but I will be because, uh, yeah, definitely, as we were discussing last week, it is a good trick. Mm -hmm. uh, as uh, Nando said, uh, new truck. <laughs> Yeah. So let's see. On the anime front, didn't watch an awful lot. Um, yeah, the new episode of uh, Spy Family, um, which I, I'm really enjoying that. It's one of those where I, you know, am watching it week to week. And I remember, you know, it's really annoying to have to wait another week for that next episode. Um, and the other one is uh, Shikimori is not just a cutie. Now, which continues to be, you know, perfectly fine. You know, nothing, uh, nothing really deep going on there, but it's a pleasant show. And I should probably uh, check into a couple of the other ones. I'm not current on Love After World Domination. Um, I was kind of losing interest in a couple of Cuckoos and Birdie Wing, the golf one. So it's probably about time to uh, check into some of the other shows that I've been meaning to follow up with, like uh, Dance, Dance, Danceur, and a couple others uh, for which I'll have to check my list. Uh, but in truth, most of my activity for the past week has been uh, tabletop role playing. Hmm. Uh, so after, uh, so so I, I had a an ongoing campaign that collapsed uh, about uh, three months back, uh, when one of the players uh, disappeared. It was a small campaign, just three players. Uh, so that was more or less, you know, removing the one of the legs of the tripod. So mm -hmm. uh, the other players decided we should just uh, hang it up for the moment. And you know, if that player comes back, that's fine. If not, you know, get, go on to the next thing. Did you see the, um, I'm pretty sure I shared the, the video. I didn't share the actual link. Uh, I don't know where I shared it. I don't know if I shared the yeah. Discord or a private Slack um, where uh, it has a bunch of D&D &D noises and, and stuff that you mm. can fire off, basically a soundboard. Yeah, I don't use a lot of sounds in my game. I've tried, mm. but it's, uh, you, you know, one of those things which is that much more to think about. Mm. And... And I also don't necessarily like do really heavy duty prep. So I'll sort of like prep general scenarios 
and then sort of wing it as the players do stuff. Uh, and that's, I, I like that a lot better than the way I used to run games, you know, back in the 90s, which was, you know, meticulous preparation, you know, making sure everything's planned out, all the options are spelled out and so on. Mm -hmm. I definitely have known people that um, I would choose not to ever play games with them because they just simply find a way to make it unfun. D&D mm. uh, &D was never really, role playing was never really my thing. Um, yeah. And it could be just that I had friends that made these, took them too seriously. They were yeah. just looking for that one friend who loved it as much as they did. And um, they took an opportunity for something to, and just made it completely unfun and too technical. Um, and so, I don't know. I, I guess that's probably why it doesn't really appeal to me. Um, something I never do. But, but definitely there are certain people in, in my life, or at least previously were in my life, where, yeah, never try, you know, never play the game like debacle with them because they'll just ruin it for you. Um, they'll ruin it for me. Let me say that. Maybe yeah. not others. Just maybe just me. So, so yeah. Yeah, so I haven't, uh, have, have not actually played d and uh, since coming back. So I haven't played 5th edition at all. Uh, as I think I discussed before, I've been getting ready to run it. And then I discovered 13th Age, which is sort of a, a game that the, lead developers of D&D 3rd edition and D&D 4th edition went off and made together. Uh, that sort of is, you know, their own collection of house rules. And, uh, and by the time I was actually back running games again, there's just so many cool games to run that are not D&D &D, uh, that I just haven't gotten around to it. I mean, no, no shade on D&D, on &D, which is an excellent game, uh, but there's also a lot of other excellent games out there. Uh, so I currently have two campaigns going. One's the Star Trek game that I mentioned. And uh, I uh, started a short campaign of Knights Black Agents, which is basically um, Jason Byrne versus vampires. So sort of super spies with a, with a supernatural horror angle to it. Okay, so, oh, born, born is what yeah. you were saying you meant. Okay, got it. Yep. I was hear, hearing Burns, oh, like, yeah. like yeah. you know, James is the last name, um, so, which was sort of did, did click as like, who, who the hell is Jason? Right, get, get my American accent up, Jason Bourne. <laughs> yeah, I got it. No, 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 it's just more on me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and um, so it's sort of high action, but, and, uh, the lot of freedom for the players so they can do just about anything Jason Bourne would do. And, um, very uh, investigative uh, oriented, which is interesting uh, as I haven't lot, run a lot of games in that style. So the first session of a new game is always a little tense, but navigated it. So uh, probably about three more games to go and that one will get wrapped up. And then uh, just yesterday, I ran a long delayed session of the troubleshooters. Uh, which is a game inspired by uh, Bande Dessinée, the uh, Franco-Belgian comics, uh, sort of graphic novels. Uh, Tintin is probably the best known in the U.S., uh, but there's others like uh, Blake and Mortimer. Uh, it, there's, a, there's a huge sort of, of separate you know, genre slash subgenre of, of comics um, of this sort. And, and The Troubleshooters is a really neat take on it. Uh, so it's, it's, it, it's no, no killing is mostly off the table, you know, it could happen, but it's going to be a rare thing. So the stakes need to be something else. And they do a great job of pulling in all the different tropes from, uh, from that sort of storytelling. Uh, so once again, this was a one shot, uh, two players, and it was a little rough as it always is the first time. Uh, but, but as it, you know, by the end of the, you know, four and a half hour session, it was starting to flow a little better. So I feel like next time I run it, I'll have a bit of a better handle on like yeah. the how to approach telling stories in hmm. that in that vein. Hmm. Interesting. Four and a half hours feels like a long time to me. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, what's so keeping me from watching like the the Justice League uh, director's edition or the Batman version of it. I just you know when they get that far, that's a, that's a lot of committed time on my part. Yeah. 
Yeah. So for, for campaign games, I usually do them a little less, like three hours. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for a one shot, it's hard to, particularly if people haven't played the game before to get them up to speed, get everybody up to the rules, get them to know their characters and get in something that's, uh, you know, a reasonable sort of story experience. Uh, so, so four hours is sort of your standard convention slot. So if you're going to go to like a role-playing game convention and play a game, usually four hours will be what's allocated. Hmm. And I found that's pretty good. A lot of people find playing online, which is what I'm doing, to be a bit more draining than playing in person. Um, I've been finding it the opposite. I mean, I, I think running games on Zoom is great. You know, it's like hmm. just like work, no commuting. Uh, and also you aren't limited by what the people in your gaming group want to play. So like if there's that guy who only wants to play D&D, you know, you don't have to play with him, right? right? Because, you know, if, if it's your friends, you want to play with your friends, so you're going to make a lot more compromises. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas in the, the vein I'm running, you know, if pretty much any, any weird thing I'd like to run, I can, you know, post on three or four discords and after... You know, a few days of scrounging, I'll have a, a group together for whatever mm -hmm. it is. So. Uh, you know, the other advantage of that is, um, well, uh, you don't have to carry the materials to one central place. <laughs> yes. So um, when you sort of have that event, <laughs> you could go, hold yeah. on here, let me get it off the shelf. Right. You don't have to, you know, worry too much about planning for that kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I've got the, the, the stack just off camera here of books for the last two games I've been running. And the stack for Star Trek is pretty tall indeed. Mm. Uh, I mean, obviously, was that doing that, was that a motivator to keep yourself continuing to watch Star Trek stuff? Uh, no, more the, more the opposite, actually. Um, so I, um, you know, it, it had been a, I, I, I think I realized that uh that i really wanted to like just run a star trek game mm -hmm. right I, I i i like i'm not super excited about playing games inspired by books for the most part unless it's going to be something like kind of like a weird take on something like writing a wizard of oz game you know you wouldn't tell it like an l frank baum story but you might you know like do some weird thing where there's lots of you know, it's a, like one of the modern dark takes on TV, right? Something like that. Mm. You know, drop modern characters into one of these fantasy worlds. You had me thinking about the weird things they did with uh, that. I'm going to call it a franchise, but basically in the movies, I swear there was some version, whether I saw it or not. I don't know. There was like a musical version at some point. Um, yeah, they'd, they've done some odd stuff with that uh, material. Mm. Yeah, so but yeah, for sure. Uh, but as far as Trek, um, actually, I've I was sort of really inspired to go back and rewatch Trek to give myself a really good grounding for running the game. I mean, you don't really need to be an expert on Trek to run a Star Trek game. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the advantages of a game like that is everybody at least knows what Trek feels like. You know, you've seen a couple episodes probably. You, you, you know, you know, people on the bridge having adventures in space, you know, sometimes some kind of dopey things, you know, every, all, the consoles are constantly, you know, exploding in showers of sparks, you know, guys in red shirts get shot. You know, you toss out the tropes like that and everybody can pretty much have a good time. Um, but the group I, I have ended up playing with is actually pretty, uh, pretty big Trek fans to a person. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I've realized that you know, like any of these sort of obscure references I'd like to toss in, you know, sort of like uh, uh, Lower Decks does, you know, the players are just going to have a great time with that. So you know, as I'm going through the original series, I keep making notes on the episode like, ah, this would be you know, great for a session. Mm hmm. You know, and there are things that I watch it for entertainment. I don't watch it to, um, I guess, create a dissertation on it, right? I'm not watching sure. it with a, a, a sort of a scholastic eye intentionally. Mm. Um, that being said, uh, it makes me want to go back. And I think, I think it was in Discovery. So there's a point, I guess you haven't really caught up on entirely with Discovery, but there's a point in time where you get sort of um, Noonien Sung backstory. Um, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it was in Discovery because I can't imagine where else I would have seen it, which makes me think how much stuff I've blanked out on Discovery over the course of its time. Yeah. Um, but that being said, there's a whole bunch of backstory there, and there is the security officer in um, 
you know, strange new worlds. And I'm wondering if she is from any of that backstory, because mm. I did not recognize her until they they sort of strung it out a few times in recent episode. Um, and they might have mentioned it in the past, you know, during these, I guess, this is the third episode, maybe fourth episode. I don't even know. There's been so few of them. Um but it's just interesting. It's a detail that I didn't pay any attention to if it was out there in the past. And again, I have not gone back to watch Discovery um, recently to look at the badges that someone had said, oh, it's in Discovery too that way, um, that I made a note about the different symbols in the middle of the badge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I think um, one of the things I'm really uh, appreciating you know, as I'm going back through is I'm realizing things from like next generation and Voyager that were references to original series stuff that I didn't really get at the time. Right. Because even though I, you know, watched sub, it wasn't really, I, you know, I, it, it wasn't in my brain the way mm-hmm. the modern stuff is. Well, you need to think about it. You have to keep in mind there have been centuries past from those gen, you know, so if you're talking like next generation and Voyager, they're sort of living in the same era, but you go back to classic and they are not. Um, and so it's funny how that, you know, Captain Janeway will ring out a particular topic of concern, blah, 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 from like X number of hundreds of years ago. And it's not like we do that to our history, right? We don't, I mean, how often do you um, have a conversation about something in the 1600s? You, you just don't. Um, but it's interesting because we as the audience, it's very recent to us in the scope of it's not hundreds of years. It's, you know, less than 50, probably. Um, that might not even be true anymore. I don't even know. I have to check my <laughs> yeah, map right. on that. 60 years, maybe. So under 70. So um, but regardless, to the point. <laughs> Yeah, they uh, from from in the in the game they basically refer to the eras as you know twenty third century for the original series, twenty fourth for uh, next generation, etc., and then twenty second for Enterprise. Hmm. Okay. Um, so yeah, and uh, but but that's that's basically what I've been up to. Uh, it's been pretty intense because uh, prepping for new games is a lot of reading. It's a lot of just trying to cram the rules into the brain and trying to figure out how to navigate a session. Mm-hmm. And once that's been done once, the next time is so much easier. Uh, but this was two of them in a week with three days apart. So mm-hmm. I'm ready for things to take it a little easier. I mean, while, obviously, sure. it definitely helps to know your material pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, I I was just having a moment and a thought. So like when I met Tim Park and he would come out uh, from he lives well, I don't know if he still does but he lived up in Toronto um, and he's the guy who made a lot of comedy videos that you all know um, mm-hmm. the uh, right right here right now is a particular one oh yeah right um, so that one is you know super old at this point but it's still a great video and the guy was very quiet and we would be I remember we would be um, in Virginia and we were basically um, going to have dinner, a group of us, like we're going to like a, a faux place or something like that. And we just be sort of in line waiting to get seated. And he would just sort of say something very quietly to me. And it took me like a good five minutes, 10 minutes sometimes to like go through, you know, in the back of my head to sort of pull apart and unpack the genius <laughs> in the comedy of his statement. And, yeah. and it wasn't like I'm one of those people like, oh, yeah, that's funny. Right. I would look at him and I was like, I get it now. He's like, yeah. you know, he, he was just a little smirk at me. So, like, you know, sometimes it, it helps depending on your company to sure really know your material. So, yep, for sure. For yeah. sure. All righty. So that is it for me. And that's probably plenty for me. OK, so let's um, let's rush on to our topic. Um, I feel no, like I no, sh- slow, wait, I've changed my mind. Let's not rush on. To our topic. <laughs> well, you know, I think what we're going to do, we're going to not be so happy about this topic. And then we're going to want to talk about its origin um, more so, which I have not watched in a long time. And I didn't think to go. Well, first thing, I'd have to figure out if VCR would even turn on and work. Yeah. Um, you know, so like I am I might have some fan subs somewhere packed away, which, you know, they're going to get unearthed when I moved. Um, when I move, 
like, and I have no idea when that's going to be. Um, I mean, I have some idea when that's going to be, but I mean, I have no idea if I'm just what I'm going to do with those tapes. So, um, Captain Tyler was yes. the origin of this thing. <laughs> this is not Captain Tyler. This is the irresponsible Galaxy Tyler. And yes. I am very confused with Tyler in this series. Um, they're, just, they're not, it's not the same thing. <laughs> No, it's so not this the same is show. A... It, it's just loosely attached to the origin. Um, so yeah, sorry, you're going to do a better, much better job yeah. guiding us yeah, into so, this. Yeah, mess. this is uh, this is irresponsible Galaxy Tyler, as you said. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I don't have the Japanese name up. It's like Munikinin Galaxy uh, Tyler, Musi Kinin or something. Galaxy Musikinin? Tyler. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's it's in the OG. OGlink.com ah, okay. slash OG Yeah, I usually have it up in another tab, but did yeah. not. Uh, apparently, I closed it down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is a series of shorts that came out in 2017. And this is, we're talking a long time past mm-hmm. the original uh, Captain Tyler anime series from 1993. Yeah, that's one uh, of those classics. Yeah. And it is um, so 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 you you know I I sort of roll my eyes, Alan, every time we're watching um, new season shows, and you say to something, well, it's like one of these stupid spinoff things, and you're like, well, you know, maybe you'll like this if you're a fan of the series, no, and it's something you, you haven't like watched, this. You'll and, and, this. and this is <laughs> the reason I roll my eyes. It's because if you like Captain Tyler, you'll fucking hate this, uh-huh. right? Because it it has almost nothing to do aside from these sort of vague echoes of character mm-hmm. designs. I recall there was what an OVA and then the TV show was the better of the two that I recall. Um, I yeah. Thinking... The, the OVA came out after it. I can't remember it. It was, there was like 10 episodes. I know I've watched it at some point, but that was a right. long time this ago. Is, this is very look in the nineties. I wasn't watching it the same year, but you know, because of, of uh, Eric and Gary, um, and then them dragging me to cons. Like, yes, I, I definitely saw a lot more. Um, I likely saw fan subs of things. I feel like the club had some DVDs sitting there, there and mm. in, you know, basically in the other room there that it's like a good, I don't know, 100 feet away from me. Um, not even 100 feet. That's that's too much. It's like 10 feet away from me where I'm sitting right now. Um, yeah, I, I, I was trying to remember if we ever watched Tyler for Club, and I'm not sure that we did. No, but we definitely saw a lot of people attempt to make um, A and Bs from oh, it. Yeah, um, we did. And, and honestly, there's only one good one, in my opinion, the one that Omar <laughs> created. Uh, that's why we would always side off the uh, sort of the VAT um, with, I don't know if Vic is still doing it, but we would sign off the VAT with his video. <laughs> He, it was his first video. He nailed it. I don't. I don't even know if he won an award, but I mean, at this point, it's sort of, you know, he did the come sail away with uh, Cartman. It was perfect. Um, okay, but what, but what we've got with irresponsible Galaxy Tyler, the uh, the the recent derivative, is. You know, it's it starts off by saying, "Oh yeah, that Captain Tyler guy you like, he's been dead for like centuries," mm-hmm. and that's and with that cheery note, it's like, they continue on, and everybody else you like from the series is dead. It's now you know centuries in the future. Uh, humanity lives on a gigantic construct, a sort of uh, ring world. Uh, that looks like a bunch of ring worlds in atom formation around around the sun. Uh, humanity is in decline, and young uh, uh, Banjo Tyler, as he's known because mm-hmm. he's got a banjo, uh, which he plays the same lick on all the time because they were only able to get a recording of one banjo lick, uh, he gathers garbage and... You know, and then we get a number of characters who show up who have vague resemblances to characters from the series. So, you know, Yamamoto is now a robot, and and, and the, the okay, the thing that pisses me off the most about the show, the thing that makes it almost impossible to watch, is Tyler's voice actor. Yes, nothing like. <laughs> well, so so I mean, in 
in anime, there's uh, they will very frequently use a female voice actor to voice a young male character, except in this case, it, she actually sounds like a woman, right? Mm. She doesn't sound like she's trying to do a guy's voice at all. Nope. And then Yamamoto, same way, and uh, and, and the uh, the girl Aslan, the, the the same way. And you know, if they aren't on screen, you can't actually tell who's talking because they use exactly the same cadences, exactly yes. the same pitch of voice, uh, and. And, you know, you combine that with just the utter inanity of the writing. Uh, it, so they do have a plot of sorts for this. Uh, most of the plot gets crammed into the like first 15 or last 15 seconds of the show while they frantically try to get in some uh, exposition. Uh, and then they will they'll just like, oh, yes, and all this happened. And then they, you know, and then they found fuel for their ship and they're on their way to the center of the galaxy. Yep. And, uh, I didn't pay attention how long the opening was, but I know the ending is 30 seconds out of three and a half minutes. So, um, But I will say that for most of them, they're actually running different visuals under the um, un under the closing. Oh, I had I, I at some point I got so irritated by the show. I just stopped paying yeah. attention to the closing. Yeah, there, there's some in the middle where they're using the same sequence, uh, but they're actually stretching that runtime a little bit more. Hmm. Uh, for the most part, the animation sucks. Yep. Um, uh, the Yamamoto, the robot, um, they don't even bother to animate its mouth moving for most of the time. Uh, every so often, there'll be like a fight sequence that's 10 seconds long where there'll be some real animation. Uh, but other than that, there is just nothing going on hmm. there. Um, I... I wanted to go look, and I didn't. I didn't go that far, but I tried Crunchyroll. I don't think you can get to the original material. Um, I don't think it's available anywhere. I'm sure if you go look for it on Amazon Prime, you probably could find an over overpriced DVD of it. Um, you know, I don't know. Well, so, so I, go look I on think it Amazon was licensed period. by. I, I think it was licensed by Right Stuff. Hmm. Uh, and I, I did not check if it's currently available. I'm not sure where my DVDs are. That would actually. sound about right. Um, yeah, I'm just checking. Okay, so it looks like you can get the uh, series remastered for uh, 30 bucks for uh, oh. DVD or 38 for Blu-ray, which is pretty decent. Mm -hmm. And now, now we're not talking Galaxy here, which has not been released. Right, we're talking the original. <laughs> the original, which is the only thing you'd want to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, and yes, and actually the OVA series is available on Blu-ray as well. Mm -hmm. I so. will uh, note because I always I always remember this when I think about Captain Tyler, um, my friend Ben, uh, who you guys I usually always play his sort of you know you're listening to Attack Generation, mm -hmm. uh, you know blah, 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 anyone sends you any email you know please delete yeah. it immediately like that guy um, he he absolutely loved Captain Tyler that was like his favorite of all time. Um, you know, and I'm sure if I call him up right now, he would he would talk for an hour on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it is a classic series. I mean, the the concept is you know you've got your sort of feckless, innocent protagonist, Captain Tyler, who seems to be always succeed through just dumb luck, but nobody could ever be quite sure whether it's luck or he's just really, really kidding. Right. And and he's always working in the background. They never like actually tip their hand for most of the series, which is why it ends up working so well. Right. And so what, what irritates me is that exact comedy format. It always irritated me. In Captain Tyler, it's perfectly mm. fine. But in Trigon, I hate it. <sighs> and so, and everyone was basically, you know, they didn't know what Captain Tyler was. And, you know, like, it feels like by the time we got to Trigon, they were, were just ripping that off as an idea. But let's put it in the old west and let's make him like, you know, this Bishonen gun guy. And and then they just sort of try to do this everywhere else at that period of time in that era of anime. And there's a ton of shows that are just sort of like that. And it's just like this useless um, individual that's completely incompetent, but they're so powerful. And you and, you know, I get when it's sort of like this um, social commentary on people that feel like they have imposter syndrome or 
you know, they have some degree of feeling like they're useless humans and that, you know, everyone has their power, their superpower, their mm. their ability to do things and be and be important and um, you know, where everyone needs them to save the world, that kind of thing. And you get that in your Eva and everything that rips off like Eva sort of uh take on that instead of like, you know, what well, Trigon I think is younger than Eva. So um but you know that's like a part of anime that's a part of where we're trying to rip off that trope and it just doesn't work it never works it barely ever works and uh captain tyler is probably the only example of an application of that that i could think of historically for me where it worked mm. Yeah, and actually, I was so as I was watching this, I was wishing that I had uh, sort of allowed myself time to go back and rewatch some of the uh, original episodes as well. Uh, we did discuss Captain Tyler on the show at one point. I'm, that sure, was, I'm sure we did. Because, I know because I checked when I, to see if, if we'd done yeah. this and we hadn't. Uh, because I remembered uh, having watched the first episode of this, I'd remembered being annoyed by it before in exactly the same way. Uh, that voice acting uh, is just really annoying, combined with just mm -hmm. the aimlessness of the writing. Yeah. Um, I felt myself sort of, when I looked away and then I looked back up, I didn't know who the hell was talking. Yeah. If they were sort of, you see subtitles. I mean, subtitles, is that's where it becomes valuable because they all ba basically sounded the same to me okay so um it looks like we last discussed captain tyler in show number 236 on uh and it's, december 16th 2009 yeah okay so that's very likely that i wouldn't have <laughs> hey ben can you stop by and let's chat about captain tyler i'm pretty sure it's one of those things in the early days we talked about a lot of shows like as if we did a full show on them, but, you know, just on and off throughout the early shows. So, I mean, back then we were just talking about all the anime. So Sure. And it could actually be, I, I was thinking that maybe, you know, it's now, we're now far enough out. We're different people. We've watched a heck of a lot more anime in the meanwhile. Could be worth going back and revisiting some of those classics that we think we know and see see mm -hmm. how they hold up, see 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 what we think in terms of you know approaching these in you know 2022 mm -hmm. and we've done that in the past where we felt um some of the material just would never hold up in today's climate um mm. you know too sexualized or too womanizing you know there we definitely had those shows um and i'm pretty sure you and i have made very similar comments like you know it just feels not correct today it probably didn't feel correct to me back then either but, you know, I was sort of alone in my my point of view on it. So, OK, so, yeah, so I it looks like I probably joined a little after that, uh, like around 250 in the 250s was when I joined, I think. Hmm. OK, it's been a while. <laughs> it has, has been it really a been, while. Has it nearly been 600 shows? Wow. Oh, man. That's a that's a that's a long time, dude. <laughs> yeah, so I I missed a few in the middle there when I was uh, finishing up grad school. But even with that thought, um, as many shows as that is, I mean that's just okay. Well, six hundred shows is a lot. Um, it's out a of, lot out of, of eight hundred of them. It's most of them. Um, yeah. So I was, part of my brain was like trying to do the calculation, divide you know six hundred shows by fifty two. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't seem like a lot, but no, it's a lot out of, but even then when you look at it, it's, you know, out of 17 years, I mean, it's, you know, hmm. it's a drop in the bucket, it feels like. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm, so I'm looking back. Yeah. 254 was my first episode. That was in hmm. 2010. Okay. Uh, so about almost uh, right around 12 years ago. What was the topic? Uh, it was pumpkin scissors. Ah, Okay. Yeah. And 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 right after that we did Toradora. Those were the, the first and two. And then we started to introduce we did some language stuff and then uh you're the one who really sort of spearheaded this whole season review stuff. And it was a while till we did that. Looks like uh, that was twenty ten. So it was about the next year. 
Hmm. Uh, because for a while, I actually, I think the first time we did it, uh, I came, I had, I like watched everything on my own and I came in before I was heading off to a conference mm-hmm. and like talked about every show with you, uh, which you hadn't seen. Right. So it was just reviewing. Right. And, and after that, we started to get into that and, oh, uh, and that became, Andrew you know, fell in love with this concept and then he was just <laughs> pushing on it. And actually sure. between the two of you, you guys sort of really kept it going um to make sure that we had material andrew wanted to deep dive way more than we had any particular reasonable amount of time for like he wanted to review in depth all the continuations and i'm like i don't want to have a six hour show uh, more importantly most of these are pretty terrible shows we shouldn't talk more than a few minutes about them and then we would get into 18 20 minute shows and i'm just like uh, on one particular topic, and then while we recorded them a lot longer, I sat there and I just carved it all the way down to like an easy four or five minutes. Yep. Um, and that just took me hours to do that. So they were always brutal, brutal to construct, brutal <laughs> yeah. to organize, brutal to put together, brutal for us to keep following through. And that being said, um, you say 2010, that's easily a good 12 years. So, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so I'm looking back at a bunch of these topics, and I can remember, you know, watching them, talking about them for the show. And there's some good stuff in there that probably be worth revisiting. I mean, Giant Killing, you know, I still make references to that one pretty regularly. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did Angel Beats in that first uh, year I was on. Yeah. Uh, we we it, so as I recall, you uh, the cast had kind of been running out of automate discuss, and so well, I, I came in with a bunch of, of stuff that I'd been watching that was sort of mm-hmm. separate from uh, the, the 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 areas that the rest of the cast at the time had been focusing. Right. And on. you know, at this point, Andrew had been sort of driving most of the conversation, and it was mostly like things that interested him. And he was more of a person that really loved classic stuff. And so the problem is there wasn't a lot of probably wasn't a lot of great things to to watch that were new. Right. There were certainly things that were hot, but that was it. There were very few of those things Mm -hmm. that were good quality anime. And really, our point of view was not to talk about them for um, 40 of 52 shows. It was to talk about them once. Yeah. And so when you only have a few of those, you know, you, you go to the well, you know, or you revisit topics. Yeah. So a thing yeah. we stopped doing is really having people on. <laughs> uh, well, which takes a doing. lot of work to, to get them on and so on. And, right. you know, fandoms yeah. changed an awful lot. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, back in 2010, t- 2009 and there, you know, that was uh, the start of sort of stuff being more readily available. You, mm-hmm. know, you didn't have to have the source who was going to hook you up with the VHS tapes. You know, you were not right. limited to just the handful of things you could get in the video store down the street. Um, and uh, but, but there was a lot of really good stuff coming out. But that was sort of when the floodgates opened up and you also started getting exposed to exactly how much stuff was out there that was not all that good. No. And, you know, look, people in Japan don't go watch all of our crappy 800 shows every season. I mean, there is a tremendous amount of crappy television in America that I absolutely would never watch. So maybe I'm being too harsh on Moon Knight. Um, Got to make myself watch more of it. Um, But like, you know, my point of view right now is nope. Well, I mean, you know, there is so much good entertainment out there. You don't have to watch the bad stuff. Right. And I mean, you know, and so like when I when we do the, the season impressions stuff, I enjoy watching everything, even the stuff that sucks. I mean, yes, it's, it's in a way it's miserable. But it's also interesting to get sort of this full cross section of what's mm-hmm. going on. And, you know, if I didn't enjoy that at some level, it's not something I would have kept doing all this time. Um, and and as, as you've gathered, we're, we've kind of run out of things to say about the actual topic, yeah, uh, which I mean, is uh, which is pretty terrible. I mean, um, I would recommend you go just spend 30 bucks and go take a risk and watch, watch it. Go buy, I guess, from right stuff is where you found it. Um, go buy it. You don't like it. Give it to a friend. <laughs> uh, I have a feeling you won't give it to a friend. So. No. Um, no, I mean, it's it's a solid classic show. I mean, yeah. you know, you have to be up for those, you know, early 90s character designs and styling. Mm-hmm. Other than that, uh, you know, I can't really comment on the content 
if there's any content issues as we were discussing earlier because it's been a long time yeah. since since i've seen it uh but you know maybe we should maybe we should redo it um in fact i might go back through uh our catalog of stuff we did you know mm -hmm. like 10 years back and uh, pick a few things and maybe you know over the next few months we'll I, dive back into them to I see see how like, our opinions have changed i feel like i have the whole dvd box set um mm. but i think that's one of those things maybe i could just buy the whole series on amazon prime for like you know 30 bucks and we can just sort yeah. of watch it together yeah. um it'll be easier uh, again i have boxes in front of the door that the tiny little yeah. storage library where all those dvds and amvs and fan subs are sitting including my dvds i don't even know what i want to do with those do i even want to take those with me mm. oh i haven't thought about that <laughs> <laughs> okay well if you're gonna get rid of those i will take take charge of them if that's uh if that's necessary yeah i'll let you <laughs> let you pill for what yeah. you want um that being said um if you're interested for for some reason that you feel like you have uh some curiosity to torture yourself uh oglink.com slash 69b 69c 69d that'll take you to crunchyroll to captain um to wiki I'd say Captain Tyler, um, and A and N. If you're interested in the details, um, I wouldn't recommend. It. I would just harshly say no. Um, yeah, yep, thumb, that's a thumb thumb down for me as well. Yeah, uh, curious to see what you know. Matt would probably see a shining light in it, but I can't imagine. No, no, Matt would hate this too. Uh, he, I mean, if nothing else, the you know the sheer incompetence of the animation would have him. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, tut tutting through the entire show. So. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I don't have anything else to discuss about it, so I guess we can close the show up. It'll be short okay. for us this week. Um, not super short, but short indeed. So that being said, for all the things we've mentioned, please visit our website, www.tagengeneration.net or ognetworks.tv. Come hang out with us on Discord. You can do that, oglink.com slash Discord. You want to leave feedback there. There is a conversation going on between James and Paul about Star Trek. <laughs> um, oglink.com slash feedback. They came to that channel. Uh, you can also become a supporter if you want to do that. oglink.com slash Patreon or Patron. And um, yeah, all right. I'm going to pull something out of this cup. <laughs> Let's see what it turns <laughs> out to be. I know what it isn't. <laughs> I think we both know what it isn't. Uh, it's longer than it should be. Okay. It is a good thing that life is not as serious as it seems to the waiter. Okay, that that is, in addition to being very hard to parse, in addition to being, I, I, I mean, what does that even mean? I know that's why. Why, why, why is this? Why is this addressed to the waiter who's handing you the cookie? Yeah, I, I just, I, I, that is why I fragmented that because I'm uh, like, what. What, what does I, I just couldn't say it with any serious sort of focus because I just couldn't understand what the point of that was. Ah, but I can say with all seriousness that that is not a fortune. And I'm sure the waiter would agree. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. All oh, right. boy. Yeah, well, thank you, everyone, for uh, listening to the trade wreck for this week. Uh, that includes the anime. You know, as usual, stay home, stay safe, and stay healthy. And until next week, hopefully a Matt will return and we'll have a new topic. Until then, everyone have a good one.